Today I'm going to answer the common question of if I get Caribbean citizenship by investment, where do I have to live? This is why I suggest people have a holistic plan because you see people who they get that Caribbean citizenship by investment. Interest from Americans in, for example, St. Lucia is up ninefold in the last year. People get citizenship in St. Lucia, Antigua, Dominica, Grenada, St. Kitts and Nevis, and then they're like, well, where do I need to live? Or they don't get that second citizenship, they don't get that plan B insurance policy to protect themselves against their own country because they're like, I don't want to live in a Caribbean island. This is a misconception. Where you're a citizen doesn't mean where you're a resident. And I want to explore that today. If it's your first time here, my name is Andrew Henderson, the founder of Nomad Capitalist. We are a boutique consulting firm that helps seven and eight figure entrepreneurs and investors legally reduce their taxes, diversify and protect their assets and protect themselves and their freedom in a changing world. We also host the biggest and best offshore conference called Nomad Capitalist Live. And so I got a comment a while back from someone who uh, has some wrong information about citizenship by investment. And that's relatively common. People don't really understand what citizenship by investment is about. So here's someone who said St. Lucia will cost you at least $150,000 plus 15 to 20% legal fees. Dominican Republic on the other side is far from safe. So basically they're taking the two cheapest programs in the Caribbean and they're saying, hey, you know, why is this not worth it? Okay, St. Lucia for a single applicant, $100,000. The more, the bigger your family is, the higher the price goes, no doubt. So you could certainly get up to $150,000. That is doable, but it's not the price for a single applicant. By the way, if you're making a holistic plan, the type that I would recommend and that we would make, maybe only one person in the family needs the citizenship depending on your particular needs and you are wasting money getting it for everybody. There are situations where that's the case. The other program, they completely get incorrect. So I'm going to get to where you're going to live in a minute. But first, let's clarify some of the basics. The Dominican Republic does not have a citizenship by investment program. The Commonwealth of Dominica, which is part of the Eastern Caribbean and is an English-speaking country, they do. And they also have a $100,000 program for single applicants. And for most Westerners, that's probably if visa-free travel is your bigger priority, probably going to be uh, a better deal. Uh, and so what this person does get correct is that there are legal fees on top of that. They are not inconsequential. There's due diligence, there's lawyers, there's all kinds of papers that need to be organized. Uh, and so what I'm telling some of the price, I tell them here's the price, right? Not just, you know, because there's lots of different fees on top of that. So let's get the programs correct. You've got St. Lucia, uh, Dominica, those are the cheaper ones for single applicants. You've then got uh, Antigua, which is generally the cheapest one for, like let's say a family of three or four. Then you've got St. Kitts and Nevis, and then you've got Grenada. They each have their own benefits and you shouldn't buy just based on the pictures of the beaches that you see. And so we responded, hey, St. Lucia's $100,000 for a single applicant. And the person said, okay, maybe I'm not the expert, but I still don't agree with your thesis. I don't know what the thesis was was. If that was the ideal place to relocate for the average Joe with a spare $100,000, it would be crowded by there by now. Basically saying, hey, if St. Lucia was the answer, then why isn't everybody moving? This is kind of the age old argument, by the way, of like, well, why would you leave the United States? Why would you want to live somewhere else? Because everyone's trying to come here. Well, who's everyone right now, right? Uh, not wealthy Europeans. Uh, not a lot of wealthy Asians. A lot of them are more going to Europe. People where I live in Malaysia prefer to go to the UK if they're going to go somewhere. And more and more, you see people from emerging countries who have wealth just wanting to stay in their own country. People who are coming to the United States, for example, are people who are looking for economic opportunities. And we feel badly for them. And I would, you could even argue that the United States created their need for economic opportunities uh, with their own actions. And so they're coming almost their desperation. You talk to people, a lot of them would rather stay in their own country if they could survive, if they could feel safe, uh, all those things. And so it's really not fair to say, hey, someone who's an ultra high net worth individual who wants to leave the United States because they're tired of having their freedoms eroded, they're tired of having their taxes raised, they're tired of being vilified in the public square, that that person shouldn't do it because an economic migrant from El Salvador is coming and trying to cross the border. They're not the same. And so the same is the case here, right? Who is going to get citizenship by investment? Obviously at $100,000, there are a lot of people who have $100,000 who could do this. And you have people in certain parts of the world that will spend this very substantial part of their net worth protecting themselves because they want citizenship in a stable country that's not gonna bother them. Maybe the taxes for some people are ancillary, the fact that they can live uh, a tax-friendly life, uh, but they want greater visa-free travel, they want more opportunities, they want uh, more opportunities for their family. And so the idea is to get the citizenship and not to relocate there. You are seeing a huge increase uh, in interest for citizenship by investment, golden visas, all sorts of other residence programs. And in some cases, those people are moving. If you get residents in Mexico, some people are going to go and live there part-time or full-time. Some people are just going to keep the residence permit in their back pocket. 
people are getting golden visas in places like Portugal uh, and Spain and Italy. Uh, and you're even seeing smaller countries like Ireland kind of make a, a comeback and see more people applying for their programs. Not everyone who gets that golden visa is going to go and live there full time. In fact, a lot of people with that divan being driven in large part by uh, U.S. citizens and now by Canadians as well, and Australians too, those folks are just looking for a backup option. They're looking to work towards a second passport that gives them uh, a distance from their government. Because if you're American and Portuguese, if you're American and Irish, hey, maybe those aren't as widely diversified as I would want to see. But at least you now say, hey, if the U.S. doesn't treat me well, I can go to this European country. And hey, if I'm a European Union citizen, I've got access to all these different countries I can go and live in. So there's always going to be a place where I'm going to be free and where I can reduce my taxes or where I can protect my wealth or my, my kids will be able to live the life that they want or whatever it is that you're looking for. And so that, all this increased interest is because people want a backup plan. They're not looking to move to St. Lucia. And so let me just go through and answer the question. Uh, where should you move if you get a Caribbean citizenship by investment? I do have some people that we work with who are like, hey, I love living in the Caribbean. I love tropical weather. I love countries with zero tax. Now, neither St. Lucia nor Dominica have zero tax policies, but you can go and have access to a couple of other countries in the Eastern Caribbean with that passport that you can then get the zero tax policies on. And even St. Lucia and Dominica have much more friendly tax policies and things like wealth and things like capital gains, inheritance, that kind of stuff. So they're more tax friendly uh, to begin with, but you've got even more tax friendly options in the Caribbean if you wanted to go to, let's say, Antigua, St. Kitts and Nevis. Uh, and so if you want to live there, you can do that. And hey, as a citizen, you can live there. If you are a citizen of Canada, obviously you have the right to live as long as you want in Canada. No one's going to ask you to leave. When does your visa re you know, expire? So for someone who likes the idea of the Caribbean mindset, uh, the Caribbean lifestyle, you can use this passport to live there. However, most people are not living there. That's why St. Lucia is not overcrowded, as the person said, uh, because they're using that St. Lucia passport to say, hey, St. Lucia is not going to judge me. They're not going to bother me. Uh, I'm going to live, move outside of my country. If I'm an American, potentially I'm going to give up that citizenship, but I'm going to be a citizen of a peaceful country that's either my backup plan or my plan A. And so if I want to go and live in probably any country with a visa-free travel with that Caribbean country, I'm going to have an easy enough time getting a residence permit if they offer one. So if I want to live in Southeast Asia, I don't think it's going to be a problem because I have visa-free access there. The only country really I don't have access to is Thailand, and they're not going to judge me either. They'll pretty much, hey, you want to, you want to pay our fee for Thai elite? Hey, you want to invest money in our banks? Come on in. They don't judge. So Southeast Asia is open. Latin America, depending on which passport you get, you may need a visa to go there and start the process. In most cases, you won't. So if you want to live in Mexico, you know, Mexico may be one that you want to get as an American, Canadian, Australian, just to make things a little easier to understand. But most of the other countries, if you go to Nicaragua and invest $30,000, uh, if you go to Colombia and buy property, have personally done it. No judgment. They don't care. There may be a few programs uh, where, for example, Paraguay's permanent residence program favors people who are people who have visa-free travel. So you might want to get, I think there's one passport of the Caribbean that has that visa-free travel to Paraguay. You might want to look into that one. Or you might want to get Turkish citizenship by investment if that's what you're trying to do. Um, you know, Panama has certain benefits for certain nationalities. Uh, it's not as distinct as it used to be. But, uh, you know, there's a few countries where they're going to prioritize certain nationalities, but by and large, no one's going to judge you, okay? In Europe, probably no one's going to judge you. Um, the UK doesn't want people to speak English in many cases, and so if you're from a Caribbean country, you can use that to say, hey, I speak English. Um, they may ask more questions, but I think generally in Europe, you want to apply for uh, a golden visa, you want to apply for a residence permit by showing income, haven't really seen any issues with that in particular. And so, uh, we could go down to Mauritius in Africa. We could go to you know, other places that offer residence. We could go to East Asia, places like South Korea. Most of the world is not going to judge you. So any country where you have visa-free travel, I think certainly won't be an issue. Many other countries won't be. For example, wealth hubs. You want to live in Dubai. You want to live somewhere in the UAE. You start a company. You buy property. As long as you're a clean person, they're not going to judge. Singapore, I think the same issue. So whether you want to live in more emerging places, whether you want to live in more developed places, I think that pretty much anywhere you want to live, you can get a residence permit with a Caribbean passport or with some citizenship by investment passport. It's not really their business, is what I think most countries think, if they even really pay too close of attention to it. The countries that may be more judgmental, what we call the Kuna countries, Canada, United States, New Zealand, and Australia, I think New Zealand probably the least of these, 
Sure, you know what, if you want to apply for some kind of Australian residence permit, they've got a very expensive investment permit. And by the way, I mean, these countries reject a lot of people on a percentage basis compared to everywhere else. Uh, but yeah, they might ask you some questions. They might, they might um, be a little bit frustrated. Uh, however, the question is, are you going to keep your current citizenship? And so people say, well, hey, what am I going to do with a, with a Caribbean passport? Where am I going to live? Well, again, you can live in six different Caribbean countries if you have that. You can travel all around the world with a peaceful country's passport. But if you have your current passport, if you're going to stay uh, you know, British, Australian, Canadian, what have you, you can keep that passport. You can also use that one. So you can use, if you wanted to be you know, Canadian who moves to Australia, I don't know why you would do that. But if you wanted to be in that situation, yeah, you would probably move as a Canadian. That'd be a lot uh, a lot easier. In some cases, in some limited number of countries, they will ask you to disclose all of your passports. You do that, hey, listen, you know, I like the Caribbean, I wanted a plan B, whatever, right? And so I think that we need to look at this as if countries don't respect what you're looking for, in the same way that if people don't respect what you're looking for, you're going to go somewhere else. You shouldn't be so hung up on wanting to live in one country where they don't like the fact that you want to protect yourself. So yeah, St. Lucia is not overcrowded because people are using St. Lucia, they're using Dominica, they're using other Caribbean passports to have a backup plan. Some people are indeed moving there. And the question that during the pandemic was, hey, what if people just started moving to their citizenship by investment countries? I mean, St. Kitts and Nevis has done tens and tens and tens of thousands of applications over the last nearly four decades. What if all those people just wanted to go and move to St. Kitts and Nevis? Like, what would the infrastructure be like? Prices would go through the roof. It'd be really an incredible sight. And so that certainly is an interesting thing to think about, but people aren't doing that because they know the strategy that I just laid out. If you want to either escape your government or have an escape plan from your government, build an infrastructure for the future, be a citizen of St. Lucia, make an investment as a St. Lucian citizen in uh, Dubai, for example, get that UAE residence permit, move yourself there to take advantage of their tax policies and saving more of your own money while being able to travel uh, as the citizen of a country that's not going to bother you, going to leave you alone. Obviously, there are other parts here where you may need to do some reporting at some points. This is where you need professional advice, especially if you're an American. Uh, but the idea is, yeah, more average Joes who have $100,000 should be insuring themselves against being the citizen of only one country, given what we've seen in the last two, five, 10, and 20 years.